Well, thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. I appreciate um, all of you um, being here virtually and, and listening in. I don't know if I'm so incredible or not. I'm just uh, an engineer and, and rather hands-on. Um, yeah, my name is Rudy Strife. I've been working with the Yocto Project for a long time, pretty much since the beginning um, of the Yocto Project when it uh, became a Linux Foundation um, collaboration project. I've been using it uh, for many um, deployments, um, working for companies and also working as a, a consultant. So I'm a, uh, I have a consultancy, a company, we do hardware and software development for embedded uh, systems. And um, we, uh, most of the work is actually done with Linux and with the Yocto project. So, um, yeah, I've been around for a while and, um, so for this, and I've been, as David mentioned, um, presented a couple of times on various other um, topics. My topic always around kind of a little bit around what I call user space. Um, you know, what what do you do with the system um, once it's it's running? How do you put it into um, some technologies and things into deployment into production? And that's what I've been done uh, been doing um, with uh, clients and customers that I have out of the automotive industry and industrial equipment and um, home appliances and and so on. So a topic that is. Um, now, coming up more and more is actually um, using containers in embedded systems. And this is the topic of my talk today. I'd like a little bit go through um, what containers are, how you would use them, and a couple of um, methods you could use them with the um, Yocto project. So I'll flip on here. So let's, the agenda, let's talk a little bit of these virtualization technolo technologies of which containerization is one. We have our class environment. We'll do something basic, the hello world of containers or the hello container. I'm talking a bit of embedded, embedding containers into your Yocto project builds, embedding containers with um, a manifest and um, building containers. All right, so, and if you have questions, and so you have please um, type them in the chat, or I guess I don't know um, who can also talk or not. So I'll try to answer those questions um, as we go to make this as interactive as possible. So virtualization technologies, what comes to mind here, it's like, well, hypervisor emulator um, container. Virtualization as such is not really a really super new thing. It has been around um, since the early days of computing when computers were uh, rather expensive and were to be shared um, among um, users. You know. The whole concept of um, Unix and um, time slices and being able to give multiple users at the same time a multi-user operating system is, is in a sense, in an essence, a virtualization uh, technology. But here we talk about well, hypervisors, emulators, and containers. What is it? What is the base idea or the, the basic idea um, of virtualization? Well, it's technology and process to share resources, so it's hardware, software, and often also data with um, multiple uh, separated environments. And commonly, of course, these environments don't necessarily know about each other. Often they, they run and assume that they're um, kind of the only ones um, using that machine. And that would be the idea. Um, Virtualized environments often run with their allocated resources. So you can, you know, processing power, you know, how much CPU time um, would be available, how much memory is available, what storage is available, what IO um, is available to, to, um, to these virtualized environments. So commonly there's two kind of pieces to virtualization and it's a host which provides these virtualized environments and its host is also responsible for resource management and arbitration between the virtualized um, environments. Uh, also so that they of course stay within their um, resource usage and that everybody eventually gets the fair share of resources and so on. And the guests, one or more, um, which utilize, utilize these virtualized environments provided by the host. Types of virtualization, there's full virtualization, which means a guest running on a host is actually not aware that it's running inside of a virtualized environment or hypervisor. Um, 
so that means also that the guest opera operating system in a hypervisor so would require no modification. It would just um, use its own native um, device drivers to actually access um, the resources. And the host would essentially emulate um, some of these um, resources. You may have seen for virtualization um, if, if you're using something like VirtualBox or so, you're seeing, um, you have a, a network adapter and it uses the virtualized network adapter is the venerable um, Intel E1000 um, network adapter, essentially. That does not mean that the host has exactly the hardware built in. It is only that this um, the host would actually model the, um, uh, the, the E1000 network adapter on using its own, uh, on top of its own hardware and providing the, the interface of the E1000 network adapter APIs to the, um, to the guest. The other thing here is what the other type of virtualization is power virtualization. So the guest actually is adapted to run inside of a virtualized environment. So it uses specific um, device drivers that are designed um, for virtualization for conceptual um, virtual virtualized devices. And the host provides the specific functionality of the conceptual device through a translation software layer on top of the actual hardware that it um, provides. Uh, you certainly have heard of that. It's um, a standard for that um, has been developed and published by Open Oasis called Vert.io. And um, if you look at the Vert.io specification, you see all types of kind of virtualized concept conceptual devices such as GPU or virtualized audio devices, um, you know, of course, um, storage devices and so on that are available there. But of course, um, the, the open standard is not the only way of doing it. Um, implementers of um, hypervisors often have uh, developed their own kind of Word, Word IO uh, te technologies in, in a sense. Um, sometimes um, because they think maybe um, the standard Word, Word IO um, specification um, does not yield enough uh, performance. You often find more proprietary virtualization for um, specific uh, graphic hardware, graphics hardware on SOCs or so. All right, so far so good. So why would you do this in embedded systems? You know, um, of course, one reason, of course, once again, is um, resource um, utilization and um, sharing. I have implemented um, hypervisor systems for the automotive um, industry. It's like in a, let's say, a telematics um, device, multiple virtual machines um, are running there, one that's handling kind of the communication to the cloud, uh, another virtualization may be handling um, software updates across the vehicle and, and other things. So, and um, that also allows, of course, um, to develop these virtual machines um, independently. Um, they're isolated um, from each other because each guest has its own um, private environment, uh, so to say. And, um, it also allowed to develop um, some of these systems um, in, in a different, different paradigms or even different operating systems, like you know, two virtual machines that are running some sort of a Linux, maybe Octo Linux, another virtual machine maybe running a QNX um, system for some um, real-time requirements or whatever the system would have. Another consideration, of course, is security. While virtualization by itself is not a security concept, I mean, but the idea of isolation and um, dedicating resources, of course, um, through that, the, um, the virtualization helps um, with that and um, things can be you know, separated um, from each other and um, you have the concepts available uh, to you to, um, uh, to make these devices um, secure and um, separate and secure these environments um, from each other. Uh, you have the possibility to have um, different runtime environments. I just alluded to that. You know, you could run Linux or another operating system on on one hyper on one guest, and you can use some um, QNX or other operating systems on another. Um, you also have um, more granularity in terms of system lifecycle management because you can um, bring up you know virtualized systems um, individually. You can bring up a virtual machine. You can bring up a a container when you need it or shut it down or 
um, restart it if necessary without affecting all of the other environment. Um, that can also help with um, system startup and shutdown performance, and as well as um, with software updates. You, know, you wouldn't have to update the entire system. It may just be sufficient to update a virtual machine or a, a container or whatever it is. All right. So a hypervisor is one of the virtualization technologies, and it's a virtualization host for running entire guest operating systems. So from the kernel um, to um, the, the API CLIP um, interface to the, uh, to the user space, um, essentially. Guest operating systems with hypervisors um, can be different. You, know, you can have a Linux system run next to a Windows system on top of the same hypervisor that is um, entirely possible. It is common and it's done. Many of the cloud services do exactly that. Um, the hypervisor virtualizes the CPUs, of course, for its guest operating system. But um, the CPUs have to be of the same architecture um, and instruction set um, of, of the host as the hardware, the underlying host. So, you know, um, commonly, of course, in IT environments or cloud environments, you have, um, you know, x86, um, 64 environments, and that's what the hypervisor provides. It provides virtual machines that are x86, um, 64. Um, commonly, there are two variants of hypervisor to be distinguished, a um, uh, type, uh, type 1 um, hypervisor, and um, it's, it runs directly um, on on the hardware, um, some examples there are Linux, um, KVM, um, Citrix, uh, Microsoft, um, Hyper 5 or Zen. Um, type 2 hypervisors run as a process um, on top of an operating system. Here I'm saying virtual box and I also say the, the QNX um, hypervisor. Now, um, I just saw the comment here, QNX is a type 1 hypervisor. Um, it is actually a type 2 hypervisor. Um, you start the QNX hypervisor kernel, um, essentially it is a um, full system, a full QNX um, system, and the virtual machine implementation is actually a process that's called Q QVM on um, QNX that starts um, the, the virtual machines. Um, I, that is the environment that I've been uh, most commonly using, uh, mostly in the, in the automotive industry, um, commonly for an infotainment system or so. The QNX hypervisor um, runs, it also runs um, parallel to the virtual machines. Um, any um, safety critical um, processes such as um, maybe the, um, the telltales, the, the indicator lights uh, essentially on a screen um, in the um, instrument cluster. And next to it, you can have um, one or more of these QVM processes that actually emulate or uh, actually are the, um, the, the virtual machine. Uh, here's a visualization of that um, you know, uh, type one hypervisor. It's a, uh, it's a, a, a shim layer essentially right on top of the, uh, the hardware. The hypervisor also provides these control mechanisms to, um, to launch the guest OS. Um, but typically there wouldn't be any um, additional applications also running um, on, on the hypervisor. Uh, on type two, the um, hardware you have a host operating system. It can, it's a full operating system. You may have Linux essentially, and you have a hypervisor um, such as VirtualBox um, that then runs the guests um, operating systems. And next to that, you can also run um, other applications um, at the same time. All right, the next um, thing is an emulator. So emulator is, is a virtualization host similar to a hypervisor. Um, host allowing to run entire guest um, operating systems. Emulator commonly run as processes on a host operating system. It's a, similar to a type two um, hypervisor. What's um, special with emulator is that they can actually run a software environment that's different um, from the underlying um, hardware. So they use the software to mimic the functionality and behavior of a original system, which can also include the um, the CPU architecture. So, an example for that um, probably is um, best example we're always using with the Octo project is um, Kremlin. Uh, Kremlin can um, emulate an ARM 
uh, system, ARM or ARM64 system, AR64, on top of an x86-64 system. And, um, and of course, Quemu can also, let's say, emulate a, um, an x86-64 system when running on x86-64, although in this case, it doesn't really emulate, it actually acts more like a hypervisor and uses the kernel virtual machine to do so. Um, Wine is kind of a, another example for an emulator. Um, essentially, it emulates a Windows environment for um, Windows applications, or even the Android emulator that you can run on systems um, to emulate um, Android devices. And last but not least, it's the um, container runtime as a virtualization technique, which I'm going to be the uh, the topic of this talk, you could say it's similar to a run to a type, type, type two hypervisor since it runs on a top of an operating system. But more so it runs on top of um, a, um, a kernel. So it's not a virtual machine in the sense that it emulates a, a CPU or something like that, but it um, provides a runtime environment for a user space type environment that runs on top of the existing kernel um, of the underlying oper uh, operating system, or the uh, the host, um, essentially. And um, it just actually uses the host kernel and its low-level libraries um, to do so. So container guests, of course, develop for specific platforms. You cannot go um, cross-platform for them with them. Uh, you cannot run different operating systems, of course, because you're using the host's kernel to run the container on top. So it's um, specific. So you know, if your host is x86-64, then well, your containers are x86-64 um, because they're running on that Linux kernel in this case. Containers do share resources through the host's operating system kernel as um, typically the same way as um, applications um, do running on the same um, system. And containers, of course, can contain as little as just one application, or just one application container, or entire um, stacks. Um, that is that is possible too. It just depends on um, what the use case are and, and what you're looking for. Build. What are Linux containers um, based on? So well, I'll just sell a comment. So Wine is not an emulator. So what it stands for? Yeah, okay, but. Um, what is it then? You know, it does emulate a, a system even though you know, GNU is not Unix. No? Um, <clears throat> and there uh, was another thing about um, BlackBerry. Uh, so, well, BlackBerry, yeah. So, mm, yeah, they, they define it as a, as a type one hypervisor, okay. I'll, I'll go with that, what they want it to be. I, um, from my experience working with um, QNX and um, working with the QVM processes and how virtual machines are launched um, inside of um, QNX, I think it's, for my opinion, it is more a type two hypervisor than it is a type one um, hypervisor. Um, so be it. Um, <clears throat> Linux containers are actually based on control groups or C groups. Um, they were introduced to the Linux kernel uh, in 2006 by Google. They were called process containers. Uh, the nomenclature was eventually changed in 2007 to avoid these naming conflicts because the term contain, um, process containers were already used um, in, in other meanings um, within the Linux kernel context. And the first C groups implementations were merged in this Linux kernel with version 2.624 in January 2008. So, what do C groups do um, to support these containers? Um, they um, provide resource limited, limiting, so you can uh, set the groups so they do not um, exceed a configured limit for memory usage, file system caches, I/O bandwidth, CPU quotas, um, CPU set, you know, which CPUs to use. Um, and so on. They support prioritization. Um, some groups can have higher priorities um, than others. Um, accounting uh, uh, mechanisms to measure group resource uh, usage. 
and um, of course control um, how to start pause stopping um, resource starting groups of um, processes or containers and the namespace um, isolation so that these groups of processes um, containers will be um, isolated um, from each other and they cannot see resources from other um, containers and that includes the process identifiers so each container has their own process prior process identifiers a network namespace um, unix time sharing uh, mount namespaces in the process communication namespace user namespaces groups um, and um, namespace inside a c group so um, these, um, some of these mechanisms, of course, were added um, over time as a necessity essentially arose. All right. Um, a container runtime stack, what does it um, consist of? So at the bottom, you go bottom to top, you have the container. It's also often referred to as a pod. Um, you have a low-level container runtime, which is responsible for um, starting and stopping these controllers uh, containers and setting up the container environment. Um, they, a common runtime for that is um, run C, run container. It's written in Go. Um, that is part of the um, it's a Docker suite of um, uh, container tools and um, taken out of it. And uh, there are other um, runtimes, um, C run, which is um, entirely run, uh, written in C. Um, it's um, it's uh, um, the idea there is um, to use some um, you know less less resources um, than the more heavyweight weight um, run C environment. There's also a couple of other projects um, that are um, trying to build um, more efficient um, container runtimes and uh, things like that. The next level up, uh, well, these um, contain low level container runtimes have an API, of course, with which um, tools can communicate or, um, with them and, um, uh, and access and work with them. And um, the next step up is this high level um, container runtimes. There's the container um, daemon, which is what's part of the Docker project, but has been um, separate out of it. And then there's you now the open container initiative and the container daemon. Uh, maintained as um, that. Uh, there's uh, the CRI O container runtime um, interface um, <clears throat> that is um, actually commonly used by, by Kubernetes um, for um, container orchestration and things like that. So, and then of course, uh, another step up there, there's tools first for container um, development as well as um, container um, deployment. Um, Everybody has certainly has heard of Docker and um, Kubernetes is um, common. There's Rancher, which is lightweight um, Kubernetes, um, OpenShift, Docker Swarm, Nomad, all of these tools that are often um, used or commonly used in the IT, large IT environments to um, deploy um, containers to nodes. All right. Good. Um, our um, class environment and what we will be doing here. So here is an, an open way. So we, the interesting thing, and I thought I put this in there, we're actually using kind of all of these technologies, um, so to say at once, you know, digital um, ocean is providing us with these various um, VMs that um, Michael and David and the team have um, set up um, kindly for us um, for use. So everybody uses its, their own um, Ubuntu virtual machine to work with, with the Yocto project. And uh, we do the Yocto project in Bitbakes there. On top of that, we run an emulator, um, Kremu, um, which will be emulating um, our target device, uh, our um, build system environment, our Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu environment is a x86-64 environment. Um, we're running Quemo on top of it. We're emulating a um, ARM64 environment with its um, Linux kernel. So we have a Yocto project host that we're building a host with the Yocto project. And on top of that, we will be running the containers. And that all works. All right, here we go. So now um, um, we get um, hands on and I have listed this here in the slides and um, now I um, 
have to switch um, um, the the window that I'm sharing um, to the um, to my command line here. And now you won't be seeing the slides anymore, but the slides uh, I have made them available um, up front um, through the um, um, through the, through the um, event um, um, scheduling system. Okay. Well, so far, any questions or so? Well, tschüss bis morgen, yeah. <laughs> it's getting late. Just share. Okay. Uh, now I think I'm sharing my um, my uh, uh, command uh, terminal window here. Is this um, legible? I think we could use it a little bit larger font. Okay. Let's see. Control plus. That's what I just tried, but it didn't do it. Nope. One in there. Yeah, it doesn't do it any bigger, so why not? Um, uh, Normally use control plus typically works. There was a hundred percent at the top of that drop down. Oh yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's probably big better. Nope. Well, this is it doesn't go any bigger anymore either. Why not? Well, no, it's getting bigger. A little bit. It still says hundred percent cents though. I think go to preferences. I should kind of increase the font or something. Do you see it? Try control scrolling. Okay, I can do that too. Nope, uh, it doesn't do it either for me. I don't know why. So. The and other option is to plus. make the window smaller. And the entire window shrinks, then it, Zoom won't have to scale it. That that worked. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, if you'd like to follow along, that's um, perfect. So yeah. okay. So we have. So I'm already in here. In the um. Um. Yeah. In the. Well, first of all, let's uh, talk a little about the convention that I'll be using here. That's what I'm saying here. So um, in these slides, if something is in this um, blue, then we're executing the command on the host system. If it's in yellow, then we're executing it on the container host, so which is inside of Quemu, um, essentially. And if it's in red, um, it's a command that we're just running inside of the container. And um, it's, we're talking about you know, file content on the build system, typically recipes or some configuration files or so. I put them in these, well, actually, now you can't see. I put those into the, um, in, into, um, into gray boxes. All right, so maybe I'll just switch this back real quick. It's a little bit cumbersome. Unfortunately, the, the reason is that my screen has a rather high resolution and it looks all uh, looks all very small uh, when I share it and I try to change the resolution, but then the aspect ratio doesn't doesn't work anymore. No. All right. Um, okay, so I just talked about the conventions here. I'm showing it, you know, blue. Um, run this on the um, build system. Yellow, run it in the container host. Um, red, this is um, inside of a, a container. Um, if the slides have some of these boxes or so, this is typically either recipes or um, configuration file snippets and um, things like that. And as far um, there is um, our build environment. So um, if you're logged in into your um, virtual machine with um, Ubuntu, 
um, you see that um, YP summit um, November um, 23. And you know, that's just the directory listing. And there is an environment, it's called um, build um, user space. So you just wanna first change to um, YP Summit November 23rd um, Pocky on your, um, in, in your SSH um, shell. And um, then um, execute the, um, well, and then um, source your build environment. Um, I used, I wrote out source because it's clearer in um, slides. Of course, you can use the doc notation um, for that um, too. And I'm now switching back to the, um, uh, to the terminal window to, um, uh, to demonstrate that. Okay, so we're already here in, um, inside of the um, YP Summit November 23 um, Pocky and then um, source OE, any, OE init build env. So you could just use the um, shell completion there to do this. And we are dropping into our environment that is already um, prepared for us um, build user space. So we are going to use our own layer because we're also adding a couple of um, things to it. Um, for that, of course, the um, well-known um, command is um, bitbake bit -bake layers. And we're creating a layer. And at the same time, we are already adding this layer to our um, conf bblayers.conf with this um, dash a option. And we just call this, call this layer meta USP glass. And so bitbake will start. Oops. Minus A should be at the end. It should be at the end. I thought I did this before. And, and you have, you to, have go to go to the, the bitbake. Bit what do you say? You have to remove the meta layer from bblayers.com. Um, yeah, so the layer name, uh, the layer name is already under conf, uh, bblayers.conf. Oh, it's already there. Oh, then, okay. I forgot to remove that. Yeah, that's already there. So, okay, well, let's, let's remove it. And, this should actually work. Yeah, okay. Now we should have it. So now we have a layer here, meta USB class, meta USB class, and then it should also be already into added into bblayers.com, which is there. Okay. Good. Um the next step is we need to configure our environment actually to use um, this for um, also for containers. So we're adding a couple of things to it. So that's we're adding um, our local.conf. And um, so in my environments, I always um, use um, system D instead of um, sys5. Just five minutes, so I'm doing this here too. Um, so we have to add um, to the distro, distro features um, system D. Uh, we also have to add um, user merge. Um, this has been a feature that has been around for a while. It is now being um, somewhat enforced, um, at least with um, NAND build, I don't build. I think um, it, Middle Door um, 2 already. And um, of course we use the um, system DS, the init manager for what we are building and um, we remove everything that has to do with the init scripts. We don't need those. Other distro features we need for virtualizations are the virtualization and distro feature, which is provided by the um, meta virtualization um, layer, which already is added um, to our environment. Um, we do need, although we don't use it, um, IPv6, is um, required because the container networking interface tools always set up um, IP version 6 bridges to um, by default and the requirement and we need the um, secure computing um, distro feature environment. And that is all. Um, you can of course copy that out of the slides if you have them um, available um, and add that um, to your environment. 
Okay, I'm just closing this right now. We're not building anything at this point. Um, but we do it um, when we're actually building our first um, kind of hello container uh, environment. And now um, let me just um, switch back. What is the user match used for? Well, um, it is to actually um, unify where um, software packages, where binaries and things are installed. Um, some we use a, uh, some pack, uh, the, the preferred way is to install it in um, slash USR slash bin or slash USR share or so. But um, there's still um, a lot of packages out there who store, install directly into slash bin. And USR merge actually um, kind of is a, a feature that actually uh, enforces um, merging um, or putting um, these in, in artifact install, um, installed under the um, slash USR um, tree. Isn't that uh, sad already by default? Because I had an impression it was the default configuration for quite several years already. Yeah, but um, apparently, I mean, applications have gotten away still with it, um, it's still in Kirkstone, because I did this um, thing with this class. Um, originally um, in Kirkstone, or I used similar techniques um, in Kirkstone, and I didn't, um, and, and it, it, I came across one um, recipe inside of um, meta virtualization that actually didn't follow the user merge um, requirements, and it worked on Kirkstone, it didn't work on um, Mikkeldor anymore, or Nanbuild um, anymore now. And we, we're getting to that in the next um, step, essentially. So, yeah, I, I thought so too, but I, um, and and maybe all of the other layers were already well, no, but um, it, it did work with, um, or let's say it, it wasn't a required distributed feature requirement in Kirkstone. I didn't have to add it to it. So yeah. All right. So what we're now trying to build is a minimal host to run um, containers. And um, what do we do there? So what packages are required to run containers as a, as a minimum? So we need a, a container runtime. In, in this case, we're using actually container D um, open container. Yeah, okay. So it's name build user merge is added if you set system D as um, init manager, yeah. That's a requirement now. Um, as a container kind of command line interface, we're using container D control or NERD um, CTL. Um, it sits actually directly on um, container uh, D and uses um, OCI to uh, communicate with container D. Um, we have to enable um, network routing and filtering actually to set up um, network environments. And um, uh, for that, um, we need IP tables um, enabled. The container network configuration is carried out by the um, CNI container network configuration. Container network um, interface um, tools. Um, there are a couple of um, kernel modules um, that are needed um, to support um, the network um, configuration. In particular, um, some commenting um, that is this. Uh, it's, it's a module. It's a module that allows commenting of network um, bridges and configurations in the kernel. And um, since we'll also be pulling to test with um, containers from the device from um, the Docker registry, we need these um, uh, certificate authority, uh, authority um, certificates so that we can actually pull from. Rudy, you might want to switch back to your slides. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I You're still displaying your terminal. Yeah. Oh, okay. My apologies. Maybe for some time I need to find. Next time I'll need to find a different solution for this. Okay. Okay, thanks for the um, reminding me. Okay, so here are the slides. <laughs> so I was talking about the packages that are required to run containers. I put them together um, in, a, in, a, in a slide, in a table. And as I said, you know, container runtime, container D open containers, um, um, kind of um, fork um, there. Uh, container D was originally part of the um, Docker project and it would was then um, separated out um, by, by Docker um, out of the um, out of the Docker um, uh, Docker daemon um, sources, and now can be used um, standalone, making for kind of slimmer um, implementation. Uh, as I said, we're using 
Nerd CTL, which stands actually for Container Daemon Controller. Control arm essentially to run Nerd CTL provides a command line that is um, very similar um, to the Docker command line. So if you're used to Docker, you would actually um, you know, kind of find your way around Nerd CTL um, too. Not everything um, of Docker is implement, uh, implemented in the um, in Nerd CTL, but uh, the most common or the commonly used and um, uh, commands are that you normally need to interact with containers. Uh, I also said, you know, um, we need um, network routing and filtering since we're going to set it up networks um, to our into our containers. Um, for that, IP table support is necessary. Um, the container network configuration, CNI container network interface, actually um, sits on top um, of IP tables and uses IP tables uh, to configure um, the necessary um, uh, network interfaces and the bridges um, from the host um, to the container. Um, for that, we also need some additional um, kernel uh, modules. And in particular, um, CNI makes use of um, commenting of IP tables. Uh, there's a module called comment, IP tables comments. Um, we, that is built, um, but we have to install it onto our host by adding kernel modules. And um, we also need the, um, the certificates so that we can pull a container from a registry in this case, we are using Docker for now. Okay. So um, we do create a small image um, to do so for our host. Um, this is the, um, the content um, of it. And I'll just um, switch back uh, to the, um, to my, my SSH window. And um, we are setting this up, and um, of course, um, please um, feel free <clears throat> uh, to follow along. We also set a little bit of an additional root file system space um, because we need a little bit more space for our containers once we deploy them um, onto the system. And then, of course, in core image extra install, you find these packages that I just mentioned. So the container, the open containers, um, nerd CTL, the certificates. IP table, um, the container networking interfaces, um, infrastructure packages, and the kernel modules. All right, switch back. Here we go. Okay, so um, we are inside of our build user space um, environment. All of the host commands or um, that, or you know, our development um, environment host, our Ubuntu virtual machine all relative um, to that um, uh, to that directory. So please, um, uh, it's easiest just simply to um, uh, remain with your prompt inside of that um, build user space, um, build user space um, directory. Okay, let's go along and we're creating this. So we have meta USP glass already there, the recipes core and um, images, so a directory for our images. And then we create um, our recipe. And we simply call it for image uh, container host. And that's an empty file, it doesn't exist. So I can simply copy these, um, the, um, uh, that into your uh, into the file. All right. So so far so good. I'll switch back to uh, my slides real quick. This, there we go. Okay. Now, um, yeah, so we just talked about the um, the user merge um, thing. Um, the nerd CTL actually still tries to install itself into um, use into slash bin um, that conflicts with user merge. So we just have to um, do a little fix up um, essentially through a, a BB append file. Um, eventually, I'll, I'll uh, submit a a, um, a patch to upstream so that it's going to be fixed. But this is um, because I just discovered this actually most recently started working with um, um, Nan build here. 
And um, uh, so and I was kind of concerned I didn't have enough time to submit the patch and then I uh, wasn't really sure if it would make it um, into the class um, when Michael and David actually started building all of these images. Okay. So um, back to, um, uh, to our command line here. So MK minus p meta usp class um, recipes recipes like container um, nuts not ctl and then container not ctl not ctl and okay so simply copy this in here all right here we go this is actually um pretty much um it for the um first setup we get something you know, inside contain container or containers because in the slide <laughs> it is containers it should be containers. Thank you for the, um, yeah, I'm sorry. It should be containers, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it was a typo. So, okay. All right, should be good now. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. That would not have worked because the um this is an append to nerd ctl recipe which is in meta virtualization where this um directory is called actually um recipe containers recipes containers okay, okay. and now we are essentially ready to run so we, we can Bit bake um, our um, image. I'll just do this now. Core image container host. So that um, hopefully is rather quick. Um, everything should already be pretty much into the in, in the cache um, to to set this all up. So it's building right now. It's starting to build. Yeah, so if I switch back here, it's now in my case. <clears throat> Can we see the terminal window? Yes, here it is. So it's building right now. It's actually um, pretty much already there, there for the cache. It just does, does the root of this. Um, maybe this is it. Okay, let me see. My build is not done yet, so let's see why why that wouldn't be there. I mean, if I go back in here, so uh, maybe make this a little bit bigger here. It's kind of just another terminal window here. So the build output put um, as typically would be in um, well, where we're building to. Deploy images, Chrome 164. Um, so um, once it's built, it should actually go in here. Mm 
no recipes in default available for Um, if in your conf, bblayers.conf, I would expect that um, the um, here uh, meta virtualization as well as well meta OE meta networking meta file system meta Python, which are also required for meta virtualization. So this block should be in in your um confbblayers.conf. Yeah, let's see what's up with this error. So it's your packaging here, but um, it was a feedback from um, Christoph that he had to run um, bitbake minus C clean Cremo helper native to make it work. Okay, so it's built now. Let's see. Run demo. Um, no graphic. Okay, so I uh, have the same same issue there. So okay. That is also news to me, but let's see. Okay, this resolves the issue. Yep, now it's asking for the password. I'm trying to do it on the Monday. So here we go. Okay, now Cremo is starting. So um thank you, um Christopher for the tip here. Appreciate that. Okay. Now you can log into it. And then um, let's just simply um, run a um, container using nerdctl. Run. Rudolf, sorry for interrupting. So what was the yes. issue? What did I say? Sorry. So what was the issue? What? What was the issue? Well, the issue, I, I guess, um, that there was some maybe some artifacts, some left over from um, Kermu Helper um, native, and um, well, Gail and um, and Christoph posted um, into the chat window um, what to do. I can actually um, uh, do that too. Uh, just to, again, I just did this, so it, it um, I had to do that. You see this. So run this command, and and then it actually cleans out um, Kermo Helper native, and rebuilds it, or uh, it sets it up from the shared state cache, and then it actually works. Uh, the password for ALILA one, I think that you should have is gotten when you got your um, virtual machine um, configuration, no? Yes. Okay, it's your confirmation number. I got a different one, so you didn't know that. So, but yes. Okay. Good. Um, okay, everybody is working. Okay, I'll see that. So that's good. Okay, so um, so we're running this um, minus it means we're running an interactive um, terminal with um, TTY. So we want to have you know we want to be able to interact with the container. Um, RM actually removes the container after um, it exits, and then we're just doing the busy box um, 
container. What this does is it pulls the um, BusyBox container from the um, uh, Docker IO registry. And once that's done, it actually sets up the networking. And then you see here, when you see the slash hash, um, that is, you know, your container prompt. So you're inside of the container uh, now. If you do um, um, check your interface um, configuration, you see there is a virtual network interface for a container. It has the address 10.4.0.2. Your host has um, 10.4.0.1. We can look at that when we log out of the um, container again. And now, of course, you can do anything you want with, with your container here. Uh, I just simply say, okay, to test our networking network bridging, uh, ping the Yocta project um, server here, and then you get the response. Okay, so um, nerdctl, so the command is not found. So yes, so you have to, uh, apparently you, um, Gopesh, you actually, it seems to you like you have built um, the host. So the um, uh, the, the image, did you built um, Bitbake um, core image com, uh, container? Yes, um, we don't have um, IPv6. Um, set up um, correctly in the in in the bridge. So C and I only set up um, um, IPv um, IPv4. What you're seeing here, INET6 address. This is the INET6 loopback address. Yes, we can also build container images in Yocto, include them in the target image. Um, we'll get get to that um, in a in a in a step in a minute how are we doing on time uh, one hour almost okay so we've got a little bit more stuff to cover here okay unable to parse um, which file file not found Um, so the um, meta USP class conf layer conf not found. That should be um, automatically um, be created if you run um, Bitbay create layers. Um, so if you have, so I don't wanna. If you have a meta USP class here and then inside meta USP class conf. There should be layer.conf and it should be automatically be created for you. Oh, well, how to exit the container? Um, let's try to exit. You're exiting, you're running a shell, busy box shell, you exit the shell by um, typing exit and you're back here. Okay, so yeah, so um, you should have meta USP class as a layer, and inside of that is a conf direct subdirectory and a should be a, a layer.conf sub um, file there. How to make Yocto a container? So you make like a Yocto build. Yeah, we're doing this um, as the last step. We're actually doing a, a simple application container. Um, we don't put an entire um, Yocto system in it, but just a one one um, application. But um, I demonstrate um, the, the process, and you could do this um, with uh, with an entire Yocto project system too.
Okay. It cannot resolve. Um, well, the, uh, the network interface seems to be set up um, correctly. I wouldn't necessarily see why you cannot ping Google. Well, I can try that. I find it should be fine. Now, when you run it for the second time, of course, um, you already have the container inside of your Quemu um, host, so it doesn't have to download it again. But um, ping www.google.com, yeah, that still does work too. I mean, it looked like that the um, the bridge was um, set up correctly. So, um, and if you do, um, if config on your um, development system, on your Ubuntu virtual machine, you should see here you know, that, the, that there is a NERD CTL um, zero um, in net network interface here that is used for that. So if you can ping Google from here, I would not, Intrinsically, see an issue why you wouldn't be able to um, ping it from inside the container. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I see that um, some of you have some issues here, and I appreciate um, everybody chiming in and trying to help here. Um, yeah. So. I'll just um, switch back to my um, to the slides now. Of course, all of that is available. Um, I made the slides available. I made um, all of the um, you know, the source files and things we're going to be using um, available for that too. So, <laughs> oh, pardon me. All right. So um, I guess for most of you, um, this worked um, okay if you tried it. So now let's look at um, embedding a container, adding container to your Octo project um, images. Now here's a little bit of you know, pulling containers from, from a container registry. And um, I just had a like, kind of a little bit of a, a discussion with one of our Yocto project maintainers, the maintainer. Um, yeah, so there is no consensus in the Yocto project community and uh, hence also really no solution about well, embedding pre-built containers um, with the Yocto project builds. And if it should be done at all, and you know what um, tooling um, to use. I mean, there is some implications you want to think about it. In particular, if you're using like third-party containers or so um, that we're embedding uh, licensing. So BitPay cannot validate and collect licenses um, used by the container. So what's contained inside of the container, um, you of course put in your Yocto project recipe some um, license um, thing there. Uh, some license statement there, but um, that, that uh, probably is also not accurate, and particularly not accurate if um, a container con contains uh, multiple um, different packages which are um, licensed um, differently. So you need to be aware of that. Um, what the Yocto project nicely does, of course, too, is a, a software bill of material. So you have a list of a manifest of all of the package that are installed into a root file system image. If you use a pre-packaged container, you won't get that um, out of the Yocto project. You will get that if you build your um, container with the Yocto project. And of course, if you look at um, security and um, CVEs, you know, containers are not built with the Yocto project, so they would have different standards for security maintenance, whatever that is, of course, depends on the container. Um, but you know, there are also some uh, practical um, considerations, I think. You know, um, private, uh, yes, the page numbers are different. Yes, um, I apologize. Um, this particular slide I actually put, um, uh, put in um, this morning and I haven't updated slides in the, um, in the um, uh, event uh, system yet. I will do that. 
Uh, there are some practical considerations I have come across working with um, organizations. They have their private um, container registries and they maintain those and they would like to use what they have in their infrastructure um, to, to embed containers in, into their system. And, um, and then there's also maybe a, a development workflow. You know, developers may be familiar with um, com common container tools I have. Uh, work with people who say, well, we're using the Octoblox SDK to um, develop our applications, and then we want to package up our applications into a container, and for that we're using a Docker file, a Docker Compose, and um, um, putting a container together, and then um, we push that to our own container registry. So we have this workflow in place, so we would want to be able to um, pull a container from our own registry and put it into our uh, Octoblox build. And then there's another use case I have seen in non Yocto project um, containers. That's so a container that can be built with the Yocto project. And a particular instance I've worked with is an Android container that runs, interestingly enough, on top of a Yocto project build. Okay. So now we're using here Docker tools just because, well, yeah. And um, to some extent, yeah, it, it may not feel right to use Docker tools um, with the Yocto project to call um, Docker out of a Yocto project recipe. And maybe not too long ago, it may not have been easily possible because um, Docker was required to be run as um, root. And um, of course, you don't, uh, not, it's not advisable to run Yocto uh, BitBake build as root, and it doesn't work in time inside of a um, Pseudo environment um, either. However, that's um, that limitation um, of Docker has been removed. Um, so as long as you can access the socket that communicates with Docker daemon, you're okay there. Um, I don't think it's the most elegant solution. I have been looking for other solutions. I try to use um, Podman um, to directly um, create that uh, there are some issues, of uh, unfortunately, with um, namespaces that these tools use. They're not necessarily meant, uh, or wasn't meant, but weren't really built um, to uh, to be used in, inside of a build environment like, like the Yocto project. So um, as I said, you know, there's, um, you know, the, the, there's a discussion around this. Um, uh, people have different opinions, and and that is um, that is fair. Um, I I haven't. I I think you know um, that you know it is a valid use case for people to use um, their registries and um, container registries, and would like to be able to embed um, containers um, one way or another um, into their uh, into their Yocto project builds. So um, on. Your Ubuntu virtual machine, Docker is already installed. It's available. It's also used for another class. And the um, the user who is running Bitbake, you know, your user you logged in with um, is already added to the Docker group. And we're simply doing uh, two simple operations um, in, yeah, I tried to use, well, I didn't try to use LXC. I tried to use um, Podman actually to win. Uh, with Podman actually, was it? With Podman, I actually ran into some issues with um, namespaces and UIDs. It, it, it didn't work. It, actually, Podman was my first go to to do this, and then I actually fell back in, into using um, Docker. Maybe something I need to look into and eventually resolve there. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so so we're pulling an image, you know, and um, of course Docker by default will pull an image that matches the platform it's running on. Um, in this case, that wouldn't help us much since we're building for an you know, ARM64 um, target. So you have to specify the dash dev platform um, directive or um, option there and specify a, um, a platform specifier that consists of operating system and um, architecture, you know. And then um, you can Docker by default uh, pulls from, of course, um, Docker IO. Uh, so we just have to specify the image and the version, or you can specify the registry like Docker or your own registry um, explicitly. And then we are creating a container image archive using Docker Safe, and that eventually will package into the um, Yocto project root file system. 
Okay, um, you know, here's the recipe, and of course, there's no, no need to type this. This is actually already on your system, and um, it is um, pretty straightforward um, here. I use a couple of variables where you can you know, set um, things with it. You can set your container registry to your own um, registry. Here we're using Docker.io. Um, of course, the container image in this case is kind of hard coded here into um, BusyBox um, latest um, and then the image archive file. Um, we are saving the container to and um, how we and, and where we install it into into the root file system of the um, the Octo project build and that would be uh, into user share. Okay. And um, that's um, okay. Well, actually, I would uh, going back here. I'm really sorry about that. All right. Okay. Let's um, do this. Um, I'll switch back to. Um, my uh, terminal. Okay, so we're um, here in um, in demo right now. So you do like power off or init zero or something like that to shut down the virtual machine. Okay, now enter this password again. Okay, so we're back here in our directory build user space and we simply create a, another recipe. Meta user space recipes, containers, and uh, well, here I missed this. Okay. Um, we call a call it a simple, simple container, and then so in this case now you should have list your directory. There should be a subdirectory that's called src sources, and that's where I put um, recipes and things um, ready to go. So we only really have to um, copy it. And we call the simple container. Meta USB class recipe containers and simple container. And I noticed you know your slides also have a typo there. It says again recipe container rather than recipe containers. Um, I'll be fixing that too. So and um, so far so good. And now we just have to add this recipe to our build. Uh, images. I just add another one. So, of course, do not remove any of the other um, extra install line. I still need it. Simple container. All right. Should be okay. Uh, bit big uh, image container host. Uh, the DB extension. Well, the first command actually just simply creates the um, the directory, but then the um, the next one. The uh, the next let's, uh, let's go back here. What is Oh, I'm back. Can you hear me again? My Zoom um, all of a sudden crashed. 
Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Okay. Um, let me share my uh, screen and slides here again. Okay. What I also want to see is to have a Snapchat chat window again. Uh, that's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> okay, well, no, I'm missing the rest of the um, the uh, the chat. Yes. So yeah. So um. Yeah, here was a typo here, maybe in your slides. So it says recipes container rather than recipe containers. I um, fixed it on the uh, fly here and my slides here that I'm showing and here two recipes containers. And um, and this is the recipe that you uh, would be co copying. Yeah, and you need to be be... done building. I don't know. In the BB extension of the um, image recipe, so and you have to oh the container host dot bb yeah. yes uh, <laughs> doesn't fit here anymore yeah here we go now to adjust this a little bit yeah make sure that you add this line to it don't overwrite the previous line or replace it because we still need these packages. In in the code snippets, the quotes are not the right ones. Can you fit you need like one line? normal quotes. A little bit. Okay. 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 My build is done. I'll switch back. This okay, build is done. Now we can do um, one Clemu, no graphic. Okay, now let's see if our um, container has actually been installed where we wanted it to be, to be in use or share. Yeah, just container images. So that is that is our container there um, that has been installed there. Now to make use of this, we'll have to um, load it into the, um, how to make it known to container D. Um, into the container D um, setup, where it also gets um, extracted to some extent, um, so that it can be run. And we're doing this again with um, nerdctl load. All right. Now it's unpacking it, it's loaded it. Now you can also always use NerdCTL like we're using Docker to list um, images that are installed. And you see our busy box images is installed here. The platform is Linux ARM um, 64. And once again, as we have done it um, previously, we can run this container. Now it's running the container um, already directly from the image. So you see it's not going through a download um, step. <clears throat> and it's starting the container. Now here you have to specify um, busybox um, colon latest. Um, if you just specify busybox, it actually will go out um, first and see on, on Docker IO there's something later than what's called labeled tagged here latest, um, what's locally tagged as latest. 
And of course, the network and everything should be the same. We'll be able to do that. Okay, everybody's you know, still, still cooking. I need, okay, I see that. Any issues? Uh, when a container failed to create shim task, I'm able to start container. So seccomp config provided, but seccomp not supported. So in your distro feature, did you add um, seccomp to it? Is that there? So if I switch to here, on local.conf, the, um, the virtualization piece, you have to have virtualization IPv6 and seccom um, enabled. Okay. Well, most likely, I mean, you would have to, you will have to start a rebuild um, if it's indeed not there. Oh, okay. Well, that was an easy solution then. Yeah, okay. So the container was um, Targo GC. Yes. Well, I mean, um, you can only just use tar, which is possible too. Um, so that wouldn't require any decompression, but the decompression is not, so it is not decompressed. It's, it's actually decompressed on the fly when you're loading. So using the compressed um, image file, I think is a, is a reasonable solution. So it's not that NerdCTL actually decompresses it first into tar and then loads it. It actually does this out of the compressed image. Okay. How are we do how are we doing so far? Any good? Okay. I'm kind of nearing the end of well not the end of time, but the end of the allocated time for this session. Second is missing from slide fourteen. Oh, let me check that. What would be my bad? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, it's missing from this, yeah, from the conventions, um, but not from the actual instructions where it's there. So, my bad. I mean, I copied, just copied this there to explain the convention. I could have done something else. Maybe it would have been better, but yes. So now we fix it. Sorry for that. Yes. So Lauren, it actually does that. So it po populates the Docker images on on Cremu and provides the BusyBox image. So, no, this was a complete new build. So you can actually, you know. Oh, 
Um, so let's see here. Images so are listed. We probably should have done this, um, but we could actually remember the command netctl. This is um, on it. it. Should work. To remove it. Okay, so now if you run this again, now there's no images anymore, so you have, but then you can load it again. <clears throat> okay, and then your image is back there. And now when you now start it, you know, it'll actually start that from the from the registry on, on the QMU image. Okay. Everybody good so far? Um, ready to continue? Go back to my slides here. Is it sharing my slides? It still shows my images. I ask you to share the slides. There you go. Long slides though, but uh, here we go. Okay, good. All right. Now this was a simple example. Uh, maybe you want to embed multiple containers, and I devised a method for that. I'm um, using a manifest um, that. So you can use this manifest, you pull it from a source URI, um, essentially, and then the recipe works through this manifest and pulls those images and packages um, packages them up. And the, the format of the manifest is reasonably straightforward. The image you want to embed, um, your platform um, designator, uh, your version you want to pull, the registry you want to pull from, and um, and then I added an option, you can re-tag the image. So you can give it a local name and you can give it a, a local version, um, essentially, uh, there uh, to do that. And um, then I added a, another little bit of a feature to it, saying if you just um, use a dash for registry, then it will use the default registry you set in the um, in the recipe. Yeah, like, could be Docker IO, could be your own. Um, if you use a dash there for platform, it will actually determine the platform from um, from the build system. And then if you use uh, uh, the dash for version, then it will say um, I'm I'm using the um, I'm using the uh, the latest version. And here for local name, you could use a dash two. Then it would use the same name as the image it had. If you don't really want to retag it. And local version, then if you just push a dash there, it would use the same version that is actually um, specified here. Okay. Now we can go through this recipe, maybe in, uh, in the interest of time, this is all in your slides. And of course I have it, you know, uh, what, what we're doing essentially first, we're pulling the images um, there. Um, we have a little snippet there that determines the architecture, the system for the platform um, specifier. Uh, and then we're pulling the images. Um, first, we're removing all of the um, comment lines and empty lines from our manifest. <clears throat> and then we're reading through the manifest, um, essentially um, set, setting it up um, and uh, yeah, determining you know, if, if, if are we using a dash as for the platform? If yes, then we use the, we determine from the build system um, we're using dash for the registry, then we use the default registry that's specified in the recipe. We're using dash for a version, then we you know, 
um, use latest. And then we use this um, well-known um, uh, Docker pull um, command um, and iterating essentially through all of the entries there. The next step here is we were retagging the images, kind of a similar um, process. You know, we determine um, from our uh, manifest um, how we want to have those um, retagged. And then we call the Docker tag command to do that. And, um, and then um, last but not least, in that sense, well, second to last, we create this image archive. Once again, we're reading through this. Uh, manifest, we're pulling, we're, we're looking at our images, and then um, we are actually um, uh, creating a list of the, with the local names, um, essentially, to be, um, to be packaged um, into the, um, in, into the archive, and then we use Docker Safe to create that archive. And in the last step, the install tasks, so we actually simply copying that um, container image, we copy the container image, as well as we copy also um, the manifest uh, to uh, to the uh, to the target system. Yeah. All right. So um, here are the steps um, to do those. So it's all um, prepared. We just have to do a um, copy and paste um, again. I'm just um, exiting my um, my emulator, and I'll, I'll switch to the. Um, the SSH shell and then you can walk through it. Okay, we create another little recipe directory here, meta USB get recipes, containers, and I actually should have copied these commands. I did them and rather than trying to um, I typed them again when I did actually the slides. So <clears throat> all right. Um, cont recipes containers container images filed so we create um, the entire directory tree there then we copy our sources here container images the recipe first containers container images and then we also copy the manifest container images and copy that to files. And um, once again, we need to edit, of course, our recipe here. And in this, just replace the last line here and call it container images, which is the sum recipe. And of course, off we go. Okay, building again. So yes, yeah, so I apologize for the mistake with the um, uh, with the SECOM um, in the uh, the first slide when I explained the conventions with the coloring and um, and uh, um, I. Uh, I, I copied the wrong thing and that is missing secop there, but the other slide, slide 15, the right one should be there, is there. So that should be also rather straightforward. In this case, now we also, um, if you followed the manifest, we're adding BusyBox. And we're also um, adding the um, the Alpine um, container to it. So 
So yeah. So as I said earlier, you know, I, um, the the opinions about why to, um, if you should be doing this or not, um, they, they they differ here. I took a little bit of flack here um, from one of the maintainers saying you shouldn't really be showing this here, um, but. Uh, if you think about it, if you're used to working with containers, you know, you think about, well, you know, I'm, I'm used to um, pulling containers from registries. That's what I have been doing. And um, and um, that is also what some of my clients have been saying. And we want to use um, this this workspace, uh, this this workflow, essentially, to do that. Um, but it's not, not really endorsed by the Octo project. But it's also a, a logical thinking, you know, if you have been using images from registries, you think, okay, well, you know, why wouldn't I want to use this work that is already there? If I'm aware of um, what the implications are. Yep, Docker Compose. Yeah, that's also something I'll be working on to some extent. Actually, I want to be working using Docker files actually to do that. So, but uh, maybe. Maybe another thing where I would be in disagreement with um, maybe with, with some of the um, the Octo project um, paradigms, but I mean, I look at it for me. The Octo project is tooling for me, and um, you know the, the tooling has to support me and what I need to get done um, for my job. Okay, so you're saying uh, I would like to know the recommendations to improve um, Docker applications. Um, maybe you can um, um, allude a little bit more on that, what you're looking for. Yes, yeah, there is a way of automating loading images too. It can be done with some um, system D. Um, uh, maybe that's... Uh, <laughs> A topic for another class, um, how, how to do that um, eventually. And um, with maybe also with more time. So yes, but I mean, that's, that's uh, great thinking. Thank you for the question. You know? So now I have these, the image, man, the image um, archive there. No, now I want to load it first. I, of course, I don't want to do it every time the system boots. I want to do it on the first boot, and then it's in the internal registry, and then I want to run these images. Yes. Um, RamFS for Docker images to use it inside of Docker images or set set one up or as a as a storage. Yeah, that's it's. Possible, of course, goes for, for, further away from the Octo project. It's not really necessary. It's nothing to do with the Octo project. It's just a matter of how to um, you know, set up, set up and launch your images. Um, yeah, I, I looked into LXD two and LXD images with the Octo. Um, I. I haven't done it all the way through. It um, deemed a little bit more mm, complicated, maybe, um, to to do it. Um, so um, it's, it's maybe another thing I look into, maybe to avoid or maybe not using um, Docker um, to do so. Um, do that. Um, that that maybe you know, um, and uh, and. An avenue to do that, um, also maybe using Podman um, to create these, embed these images, create those images. So, okay, <laughs> so my build has finished. I don't know about you guys, but um, maybe all back on the track. So, um, <laughs> give me. Okay, of course, um, 
our image container image order gc should be there and of course our mind and manifest here what's in that um is there too so we have it here and now we can well do this first so there are no images in our internal registry as we expected now we are loading it Now, node CTL should be just processing that archive and found one, which is the the um, <clears throat> the Alpine image that I um, renamed or retagged um, in the manifest, and I also kind of retagged um, BusyBox to um, BusyB and um, Alpine. I renamed to Swiss Alps and um, Goldfinger. Uh, Goldfinger was the first chained fun movie that has scenes from Swiss Alps in it. And um, because I couldn't really come up with anything else, maybe. And now you see here, of course, you know, we have those images are known now with those under those names, essentially. And now this time, we actually run our Alpine image for a change. So we run Swiss Alps, Goldfinger, and um, now the um, the, uh, the 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 Alpine image doesn't really have an entry point that's um, started by default. Um, so, but we just want to run the shell. So we specify that that we want that. If you don't have an entry point, then the container will start up and uh, will exit again because there's nothing to run. Okay, now we're having a shell again. Um, of course, well, the network configuration should be up and should be all good. Same thing. And then, of course, you know, now this image has other things in there. Other tools, whatever comes with the Alpine image by, by default. Um, so far, so good. Working for everybody. <laughs> any any questions around this part here? Turn down my emulator. All right, good. Glad that it's working. So let me now come to the last um, step and I change my share again. Two. Two. All right. Okay. Last but not least, well, last for this, I mean, there's many, many more things that can be done around containers is let's build a container with the Octo project. And for that, the uh, meta virtualization layer provides the image OCI class, which creates an OCI open container interface compatible um, images. And um, these are recipes and they're very similar to regular image um, recipes. So you use an image install, you put in there what you wanna have in that um, container um, essentially. The class also creates a tar image compatible with the open container in, in, uh, initiative. So um you can find the spec um there and you can load this um image again using docker or nerd ctl or whatever um tooling you prefer to do you inherit this class of course um, by the recipe and you configure it to various variables and i'll go through those and you add packages to it by adding them to image install that's pretty much it so a couple of configuration variables you can use um to kind of tune what o image OCI actually does for you. And 
uh, OCI image author, you can specify the name of the author and also put the default on there. You can find all of that inside of the code um, of the class in the meta virtualization layer in the um, class um, subdirectory. You can have an image or an email, of course. Um, you can put tags on there already. By default, it's the late, latest. Uh, the runtime user ID, that's not set um, by default. Um, and you don't have to set it either. So um, the, you can set the image architecture, but it's automatically set um, for you already. So you don't have to worry about that. It sets the image sub architecture for you. You can specify an entry point um, that's going to be started, a command that started when the co uh, container launches. So it's by default, it's sh. So. And you can give that um, command, of course, also some arguments um, if you wanted to. So a couple of more, um, image working directory. This means what is the working directory for the entry command. So typical things you can also, of course, specify, you may know from Docker files that you can specify those when you're creating these. And um, to what stop signal um, the, the container um, responds. Um, you can already um, put in there you know, what, what ports you would like to um, expose um, out of the container. And um, you can also specify image labels and um, some environmental variables you want this image to run. All right, let's um, look at how a recipe looks like. Um, pretty straightforward, and I'm simply using an example that is already provided by the uh, meta virtualization um, layer. Here we have a small application of Flask um, demo. It creates a you know, Flask web server environment, um, essentially the entry point in this case is a user bin Flask app, the application, and you can you can find the application in the meta virtualization layer. And um, our image file system types are containers and um, OCI, so we create these um, container type image and then OCI container type image, we inherit uh, from image, um, we need the image from facilities and we inherit from image from OCI. Um, we uh, don't set any I mean, image features, image link words, although it's pretty valid to do so. And um, yeah, so no recommendations that would be, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, no extra image recommendations um, for it. And then what we want to install in our container, um, base files, um, password, um, netbase, so we have networking um, available to us. And then, um, yeah, the uh, and then there's another variable, um, container shell, um, essentially that way you can add um, things to it. You can specify your container shell um, to it. That is what actually used. So container shell is set to um, sh. And um, we're adding then furthermore um, hello world um, flask to it. Uh, it's a different, so o OCI is a, um, uh, is the OCI compatible image and um, container is, no, I'm, I have to check actually what format that is in. I don't know at the top of my head. And um, specifically now, you know, of course you want to build this container um, without a specific kernel because um, yeah, so it's, it's just, it's an application container. Now um, let's um, walk through this. So, I'll actually uh, switch back to my shell here. No, I didn't do that. Sometimes Zoom does not accept the new share. No, it does. Okay. We're here again and build um, user space. Yeah, create our and I don't know why I always forget these. It's, I don't know, well, too much copy and paste, I'm afraid. So I'm sorry about that, but I will upload the um, resolved images too, so that you have those available. Okay, recipes, containers. Let me just call it the Flask um, container. And then we have the recipe recipe readily uh, readily available. Okay. And then let's just
add it to it, our image install. Actually, and, well, that is that. Mm, okay. Now, since this is an image and um, image recipe, so there's no like image and install. So we, we use this, you know, a little bit of a hack essentially just um, to use root of S. Oh, don't do that. Move it around. Root of S um, post process command to add this um, container simply to the data there. Here it is. So add container. So um out out of the so it creates the some um, flask uh, demo OCI tar um image and we just copy it um to the data there and we use a rootfs um post process command um to um to execute this the snippet um, essentially. Okay. Let me just build it and then I go into Answering some questions. All right. Oh, it's not visible in the slides online. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll fix the slides. I'll up, upload new ones. And uh, your project as from SPDX tooling create reports for containers. Uh, yes, it does. That is that is the same thing. So that is the one advantage, of course, if you're using the Octo project, you. Um, you get the the manifest um, for it, and you get the license the license manifest and um, what packages are installed. Oh, and now I made a mistake. Actually, I didn't big bake the flask container first. Well, let me interrupt this. Force this first. So now it's, it's two built, we're building two images. First, we built the, um, the Flask container image. And then we built our Cuemo image in which we embed it. Embed it yeah. Paul, can you trigger the build of Flask? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can it's done within one build, tr trigger it? Um, yeah, you could put a dependency in there. So, um, Yeah, well, technically you could, well, that's an interesting question. Maybe you could just simply add, you know, Flask container to, to image install, although it doesn't install anything, um, but it should um, create the dependency then. Or multi-config, correct. Okay, now the flask container, now building the demo image. All right. Everybody building too? Or maybe you're done already? Okay, yeah, good. I mean, if so, this would be kind of, you know, uh, let me, I'll just build and just switch back to my slides, kind of the last <clears throat> part of this. And that's usually took longer. So, so you add this once you're there, you know, you see your 
we can load that Flask container again. And, um, yeah. and then you can test your, your Flask container. Yeah, if you're already done, you know, just start Quemu, load your, um, your, uh, the, uh, the container image. <clears throat> and you should see it there. Yes, I'm, I'm going to reload the presentation, of course. Yes, that will happen. Okay, yeah, my build is um, well, 99% done, so almost there. <clears throat> Here we go, so my build is done, so I'll just switch back to my shell terminal here. Let me see, oh. what is it doing? It's doing nothing. I'm jealous. Can you see my shell screen again? Because it seems to kind of odd, I guess. Oh, being the slides. Zoom. We only see the slides. For, on, for sharing. Oh. All right. We see the shell now. Yes. Rudy, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. Oh, yeah, I was I was muted. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I had to restart Zoom because it crashed on me and then I was joined um, without uh, with the microphone turned off. Okay. So back here now into our thing. Now we should 
see our um flask demo flask container image here too so it's there so of course now we have to load it again so i mean nerd ctl images um there's no shouldn't be anything loaded right now so load i use a share flask okay so we share doing this Okay, we are loaded. Let's check if this image is there. Okay, it's called on Flask demo tag latest. And then, of course, now we run this. So, this is a container, of course, that runs by itself. So, what we're going to do now, um, we start the container and we detach from the container. So it continues running um, in the back run. So we give this container a name, which is called Flask, because um, if you run containers in the background, you want to give them a name, otherwise they get some arbitrary um, um, hash um, name makes it hard. Although you can list them, of course, when you run. So we're using detached, and then we're running the Flask demo. All right. Uh, Oh, yes, of course. Get the run here. Okay, setting up network interfaces and everything. Okay, now we're back on. So, in contrast to the all the other examples where we started the shell and it dropped us into the container shell, uh, now we're back on the shell. Uh, prompt of our um, Quemu host. And now there is a web server running inside of this container and we can use um, wget and, and my quiet it and minus o mine dash means um, give don't write the file to disk but um, show it to us http 10. Dot zero dot two which is normally our container address and this web server is running on port nine thousand and then we have to grab the yocto and then we should get yeah hello from yocto so that's served now by the web server the flask server inside of the container and then there's a similar thing for open embedded yeah hello from open embedded all right now, since there's some containers running in the background, of course, you can attach to it, kind of an additional last thing we can do here. Um, exec minus it flask sh. Okay, now, now we're running a shell inside of the container. You know, so we can... Yeah, so we see here our um, Flask demo running there. I'm um, still in the background that continues to run even if you're attaching to it. So you have you know, containers that run by itself um, and you have shell available inside of that container. So you can always um, uh, uh, attach to it and um, poke around inside of the con container. And last but not least, you wanna get rid of this container that's running in the background. Here we go. Now oh, we're done. Okay, so um, yeah, this um, concludes the session. So we quite ran over, it took over two hours to get this all done. I guess I always have a little bit too much, but um, I hope you guys um, found it um, useful. And if there's any additional questions or so, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. And well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sticking around longer.